As we mentioned in the feed, Trek fans in Austin got a surprise preview of J.J. Abrams' new Star Trek movie last night. But do the fans think the new franchise will hit warp speed or just run on impulse engines? Nerd joke. You guys know? Yeah! Okay. <laughs> Early reviews are in, and we've got the answers in the loop. Joining me from Austin, Texas, to help us make sense of it all, executive editor for FilmSchoolRejects.com, Neil Miller, joins us. How are you, Neil? I'm great, Kevin. Thanks for having me. No, th thank you for coming on. I read your write-up uh, on the whole event, and it was uh, just an, an incredible uh, story. And I, I hope you can kind of retell it here, because you were at the Alamo Draft House last night. You were expecting to see The Wrath of Khan. Film strip breaks, then what happens? Well, I mean, just as Kirstie Alley was making her debut in Khan, it, it burned away. And uh, literally a few seconds later, some creepy guy in a trench coat shows up, and it turns out it's Leonard Nimoy, and he's holding a film canister. And we all kind of came to the logical conclusion that it would be way better to just watch the new movie instead of Wrath of Khan, <laughs> yes. even though there were some, some, some Khan supporters out there. Sure, but and, Kirstie uh, Alley is it, the it, proper it, time to break the film strip. I, I bet there, was, there, were, there were several dry eyes we in the house. We didn't but... even get any Shatner. Oh, let's, well, that's okay. Did we get any Shatner in the new one? I mean, let's, let's avoid some spoilers here. I mean, what did you think? What, what goes down in the new Trek film. I thought it was awesome. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to get into any spoilers, but I thought it was. It was big. It was beautiful. It was incredibly well done. You know, it kind of kept with those. It, inter it reintroduced us to those familiar characters that we know and love, but it also did it in a very fresh way. And I thought they handled it incredibly well and told a very smart story. And you know, this is Star Trek like we've never seen it before. It's it's bigger and it's shinier and it's. A so lot the, of fun. This ain't your daddy's trek, exactly. This is a, like a reimagining? Not, a, not exactly. And it's funny you mentioned my daddy. I brought my mom to the screening. And I don't know if it was, you know, how close we were sitting to Leonard Nimoy or not, but she just had a blast. And she grew up with Star Trek. And I think that speaks well to, you know, there, there's a lot in there for some old school right. Star Trek fans. Well, Neil, let me ask you that because uh, to that point, you know, Nimoy's sitting so close to you. The fanboys, of course, are there to watch another Trek film. They have no idea. The screening is a surprise. Leonard's a surprise. Could it just be that kind of fanboy gushing that's going on right now? Because it seems that every review I've seen online has been glowingly positive. Was, were the nerds in a trance that night or is the movie really that great? <laughs> Well, I mean, there is something to that. There is something to the experience. And I don't think anyone's going to see Star Trek the same way that we saw last night. But what, I, what I've tried to do over the last, I don't know, 12 hours is kind of divorce myself from the experience. Mm -hmm. And trying to look at it objectively, it is a really, really strong film. Oh, well, that's it's going to make for a really great, strong block, uh, summer blockbuster. Well, you know, some have voiced concerns that the film sort of looks like uh, a little bit like 90210 in space. You know, moviegoers have problems with actors mm -hmm. replacing each other. And here we have like a whole new cast stepping into iconic roles. Um, what see you on that one? Should we be concerned? How did everybody do? Well, you know, I was one of the, Detro I was one of the early, uh, early people that were criticizing this cast, and I'll tell you, they get it. You know, they, the first thing they get is the essence of these characters. They're not trying to mimic the old characters, the old actors. Uh, they get the essence of the characters. They also get the nature of the relationships. And I think the fact that they stuck, uh, stuck to the commitment to good character, good story, is something that screams old school Star Trek to go along with some really great visuals. Right. Well, let me ask you about the visuals because, uh, you know, I've also seen a couple of Twitters that said maybe the CG overshadowed some of the character in the story. It sounds like y you feel that wasn't the case. No, not at all. I thought it, the CGI is beautiful. There's a there's a shot where you first see the Enterprise, and you know the Enterprise has never looked that good. And J.J. Abrams does a great job of creating this expansive universe. And I thought you know they used it uh, incredibly, incredibly in an intelligent way, and not they didn't overuse it. It wasn't too glossy. Uh, they kept with the characters. They they made sure that. Uh, that they were telling a good story right. first. And I'm sure the, the sounds of the collective the nerdgasm kinda... completely drowned out the sounds of the Enterprise when it hit the screen for the first time. <laughs> but, Neil, the final word no, here, because sadly great. we're out of time. I know, I know you really love the sound, but Ugh. is this film going to successfully reboot the Star Trek franchise for a new generation? That's what we all want to know. Absolutely. Absolutely. I walked out of there ready for another one, ready to share it with some, some new Star Trek fans. Well, I know Paramount's already working on a sequel, so of course you're going you're gonna to get the chance to see it. Bring Mom to the next one Indeed. as well. Maybe Nimoy will come. Oh, definitely. <laughs> come and join you. Neil, uh, pleasure <laughs> having you, sir. Thank you so much for keeping us in the loop.